EA's had a weird last couple of months, haven't they? They've gone from pretty much being a laughing stock, well, they kind of still are, to bringing out this and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Now, I do have videos on, well, this and Jedi Fallen Order coming, but I thought I'd do Need for Speed Heat first, given I actually did play the entire 10-hour trial, because <laughs> I actually really liked this game. This is a fun Need for Speed game. I was not thinking it would be any good, but here we are. So, uh, I actually went back and played Need for Speed Payback to see what this was like, you know, because I thought, oh, you know, half the stuff, like, this game does, like, does a lot of things right, but Need for Speed Payback did, like, 40% of all those right, and still felt pretty good to play, but Payback felt okay, but this, I'm getting Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005 vibes from this game, it reminds me a lot of that game, in a good way, uh, it, it do obviously does things better than it, obviously, and uh, it does things worse than it, because those Need for Speed games have a certain charm to them that will never be replicated, but this can get pretty bloody close to it. I love the customization in this game, it's pretty good. It's a lot less restrictive or level-gated than uh, Payback was, so you can immediately just personalize your car from the get-go, which is really nice. Uh, the physics feel pretty good, actually. At first I thought they were a bit janky, but then I got used to them and I actually really started to like them. And uh, depending on the car you drive, the cars do feel quite different. You can orientate them between off-road, track, drift, and uh, there's another option. Off-road, track, drift, and road, I think. I think road's the last one. But uh, they all feel pretty different. You can gear any car towards anyone. Some of them are more geared towards us, some than others, but it's it's pretty good. And the open world design, well, the map's not huge, but it's a fun map to drive on. And so these tracks are really fun to drive on, actually. Like, I'll say that much. Like, if if the world map isn't that great, the tracks are, and that's that's encouraging. So, what, what about the car list? I should, I should probably go on about the car list at this point. The car list is, is okay, really. Like, the starter cars are the usual Need for Speed affair, with pretty much this being the exception, which is the reason why I picked this, because I thought, oh, I want something, I want something different. So I picked the Bimmer, the old school Bimmer. And there's a lot of convertibles in this game, which I find a little strange. It reminds me of Hot Pursuit 2010, actually, with its car list, because that, that also had a lot of convertibles in it, actually. In fact, quite a few convertibles were DLC too, which I kind of found pretty funny, actually. Uh, so yeah, car list is actually not bad, but I think it'll be a lot better through DLC. There are some strange omissions, though. I can't remember any right now, because this has been a little bit since I last played this, but I'm just going by based off what I remember and the footage that I recorded. But visually, it's actually surprisingly okay on here. Like I thought, because there's, there's, there's an agenda going around. The, the Xbox One, the base Xbox One and Xbox One S can't handle games anymore. <laughs> Um, well, this is running on an Xbox One S. Looks pretty good to me still. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is another game that's kind of in a similar vein to this. Th th that struggles more than this. These both, the, the one thing that both these games have in common is that they're pretty low res on the base systems, which is, I guess, to be expected given they always were lower res than the PS4 counterparts to begin with, like in the early gen. But, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of the core visual features are still here. And the game runs pretty smoothly too, actually. I'm actually quite impressed with how well it runs. It's definitely not a Forza Horizon, but for what it does, and for what it focuses on, it's a very focused, fun game. And I really, really like that. I'm re quite, quite happy that there's a, a Need for Speed game that I can go and say, Wow, this is really good. Because 2015 had moments of brilliance. Payback was a little better. If, uh, I, liked, I liked 2015 more than Payback, because Payback was just a bit weird. Payback was like... Hey guys, we want to do a Fast and Furious game, but we don't have the license. Something like that. Or at least this just feels like another <laughs> Most Wanted-esque game with the cops chasing you at night. Like, yeah, there's no cops. Uh, there are cops actually day, right, and during the day, actually, I'm wrong. But they don't chase you unless I believe you slam into them or something like that. But at night time, they're, they're really aggressive and quite brutal too. So you kind of got to, uh... It's really weird because they, they encourage you to gain rep during the night so you can do more, like, progress through the story. But a lot of it requires you to kind of meticulously tiptoe through certain races and avoid cops and have them go towards the other races and stuff like that. So it's there's, there's a lot of decision making behind it. And if you get arrested, you don't lose your car, as far as I can tell. I'll, I mean, I'm going by like Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005. Like, you lose your car if you're arrested three times. But uh, you do lose your rep and you do lose a good chunk of cash. Which you kind of do need the cash to upgrade your cars. It's not necessarily essential given you can pretty much like I have a like a 200 level rated Honda Civic Type R FK2 that's breezing through some of these events. In fact, you'll actually see it in the next race actually because I've recorded not one, not two, but three races for you, so you're welcome. So you can breeze through them reasonably easily. So it's more or less just if you want to buy extra cars or really want to push the uh, customization 
on on the vehicle that you own or the vehicle you've chosen as a starter vehicle. Um, which I guess is nice because it's freedom of choice. And to my surprise, I actually had to look this up actually because I wasn't sure if they were there or not. But there are no microtransactions in this game, which I found really interesting. It's almost as if you don't really need them, but they're there anyway. As much as like it doesn't, you know, you can ignore them. It's really annoying that they're there anyway because they they're there for a reason. No matter what people might say, there's always an insidious reason behind microtransactions, and they're completely absent from this game. Which is very interesting, considering Payback had quite a bit, actually. Complete with all those speed cards and shit like that. So that's, uh... It's really weird, because, like, again, you didn't hear much about this game before its release, and... Now it's out, it's it's great. It's it's pretty good. It's just like, what the hell? This, this, this shouldn't have been as good as it is, but it is. Whoops. This is another example of a really good track, actually, because, again, it's just open. You, you, you can drift into things and destroy stuff. There's a massive sense of, well, freedom in the driving. It's great. I, it's, it's just, it's really, it's kind of almost underrated, given not many people are talking about it. It's really interesting, given that you think it'd be getting a bit more attention than it would be, but I guess car racing games that aren't named Forza or Gran Turismo, or actually more or less competitive racing games like Gran Turismo, aren't really being given much attention. That being said, I'm sure the usual Need for Speed core fans will, will love this game, really. I'm pretty sure there's a few who liked the 2015 and Payback. I mean, I'm in the 2015 camp. I liked that game quite a bit, but the, uh, the there was a lot of shit fuckery with that. The online only crap. That that was that was still awful. And they and that's it wouldn't surprise me if that game servers are like shut down in the next year and it's completely unplayable or something like that. So uh, yeah, there's there's always that, but I guess. You can make up your mistakes with this, you can, you know, you can fix those mistakes with this game. And that's good. That's always, that's always nice to see. I, I can't get over how much crap you can destroy on this track and uh, have your car still drivable. There is a damage meter that doesn't really seem to move that much during the day races. At night time though, as I said before, it goes down really quick. And fuck that clean coal sign. It looks like some Australian government propaganda bullshit. Gotta love it when there's like just random shit like that around the place. Just, it kind of gets insulting. Especially with, uh, you know, climate change and all that, you know. Great. Clean coal, that's what we need in the game now. Our games need clean coal. Which is weird, actually, considering we use coal to power the electricity that uses our consoles to power the electricity. What am I on about? But yeah, we need, we need the electricity that comes from that to power our game consoles. <clears throat> what, I mean, what, what, whoops. Uh, uh, yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if there's like lobbying for that sort of thing though, because you just don't know. The, look, the way I see things now is that if, if there's if there's something as bullshit as, you know, a lot of things going on in the world right now, uh, there's a very good chance that a lot of conspiracy theories are true or a lot of loony theories are, have some merit to them. I'm not saying, you know, right-wing ones have any merit, but I'm saying like, you know, Microsoft like trying to deny like climate change and stuff like that. There's a couple of things related to that that are just a bit strange, but uh, yeah, quickly going from talking about how much I like this Need for Speed to cynically talking about climate change, isn't that great? Oh, they, there's some of the stuff you destroy in the previous lap stays there, that's interesting. You've probably noted how far ahead I am of everyone, so I might as well just end it on this because predictably enough I, I do like win the race. So yeah, that's basically Need for Speed Heat guys, it's a good game, do try it out, thanks for watching and I shall see you in the next video whenever that might be. See you later.